All right, I'm here with my little buddy Sage. Sage is a bit of a barker, and uh, she barks for attention. She also barks when she doesn't like things. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over something I call training for attention, which is gonna be using a clicker and conditioning the dog that listening to me is the best thing to do because that gets the rewards and that uh, barking doesn't, yes. Now, it's important to understand that for dogs, good attention and bad attention from us as humans is pretty much the same thing. Unless you're being abusive to your dog, which you obviously shouldn't do, uh, that'll damage your relationship. So if your dog barks and you say, quiet, then the dog is like, but that's a great way to get attention. And I, all I care about is getting attention. Bow! Yeah, I know. I don't care what kind of attention Bow! it is. Sit. There you go. Okay, now one little note about, about uh, barking. Um, when a dog barks, we often have a tendency just to tell it to be quiet or to shut up. If you're trying to tell me that my house is on fire and you're my neighbor and you come over and say, hey, David, and I say, shut up. That's not, gonna, I know I'm telling him, I'm telling him right now. That's not going to make my neighbor not want to, she's saying, I don't want you talking. I want you giving me treats. That's not going to make my neighbor talk less. Find it. Um, that's going to make my dog, my neighbor probably uh, uh, talk even louder because I'm not hearing them. Now, we might not agree with what our dog is barking at, but we do want to acknowledge that. Now, I don't care necessarily that my dog barks. I usually look for the root cause of the barking. In this case, I think for her, I think she's kind of spoiled, and I think the barking works. When she barks, she gets attention. So I want to give her a replacement behavior, something else she can do to get attention. So to do this, I'm going to be using a clicker. Now, in order to use a clicker, you have to first do what's called priming or loading the clicker, which means that you basically click and you give the dog the treat. Now, um, you can, uh, I usually do this about 12 treats, maybe three or four different occasions the first day or two, and then I don't have to do it anymore. So I can also go like this. I can throw it and I want to click and then the dog gets the treat. It's not at the same time. So I want to do this until when I click, the dog looks at me like that and you don't have to hold it next to the dog's ear. They can, and if your dog is spooked by it, put it in your pocket or behind your back. <laughs> So the click is to indicate that the dog did the thing that I wanted it to do. So I would probably have you just start this inside, but we have a, a, a cornucopia of other dogs there. So we wanted to do it with one dog at a time outside. So what you would do is, it's actually kind of what it is. She's doing it early. So I'm going to get up and move around. So I'm, gonna, I'm doing the narration now. So that you're probably not going to hear me quite, quite so well when I'm farther away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask her for sits and downs. And when she does those, I'm going to click the instant her butt hits the ground. Then I'm going to give her a treat. So now she's going to be have motivation that if I want to listen to get a treat from David or attention from David, I'm going to do the things that David wants. So I'm also going to click if she looks at me. A lot of us take for granted our looks and dogs looking at me, but the more your dog checks in with you, the more they're looking, the less they're looking at the guy on the bicycle across the street or the squirrel or whatever else it is. This is demand attention barking. I want the treats that you have. You're talking to the camera. You're not talking to me. This is more of a petulance, uh, but this this technique will help that as well. Now, normally I would probably have you do this inside your house because in, and if your dog, before I go any further, if your dog has difficulty doing it in an environment, you want to ask yourself, find it. You want to ask yourself, is there too much distractions going on? If that's the case, then you need to move to a quieter block or a part, quieter part of your neighborhood. Or if this case, maybe starting inside your house. So what, what I would do is, uh, I'm going to do it right here. I'll do a couple of sitting. Sit. And then I get up and take a step or two. Sit. Now she also, and this is a little sidebar. She, she likes to bark when people get up. And I can show you right here. Oh, she'll do it anyway. So what she's saying there is I disagree with you barking. So with you getting up, excuse me. So what I could do if I want to do that is I would kind of raise up a little bit and click and give her the treat. I have another one here. I raise up a little bit more. That was too much. So if she barks, then I raise up too much. So I go a little bit. Up. So I always want to back it up to a smaller step or movement that the dog is successful in behaving the way that I want. Then I do that a couple times. Then I might stand up a little bit higher and then click. And then I stand up a little bit even more and, and click. I'm clicking for not barking. So the dog barks. It's not a punishment nor a correction. I'm just not going to reward the dog. Careful. There's a bee around. Okay. I was able to stand up complete with, without any barking that time. So go at your dog's pace. All right, now I got to chew up more, uh, split up more treats for you. So I'm going to just imagine we're coming out of the house. Come here, sweetie. Right. So every couple steps, I'm just going to stop and ask for a sit. 
Now, I don't think she actually knows what the cue to sit is. I think she knows the gesture, and all dogs pretty much look gesture first. So what I'm gonna do, but look at the attention I'm getting from her. So I say, sit. Oh. My click was off there. Sit. Now, when you're doing this, it's best if you teach your dog to sit, which I'm gonna go inside and do with the dogs here in a second. So you would really wanna do this when you're gonna say sit, your dog sits pretty easy. I'm having to lure, which is okay. But for this exercise, I really wanna be able to say sit, the dog sits, I click, give a treat, and I take a couple more steps. Sit. So the click is indicate she did what I wanted. Then I take another couple steps. Now I'm gonna do one for eye contact. Now you notice I'm holding the treat out? I'm not giving it to her. She's coming back to me. Now I'm gonna the camera person stay right where they are. Um, I'm gonna show you a little trick if your dog pulls on the leash. So I'm gonna back up here, we're gonna walk towards you. You're supposed to, this is the part where you're supposed to pull on the leash. All right, let's try that again. Now I clicked when I shouldn't have. When the dog gets to the end of the leash, I make a kissing sound like, and I hold the treat out. Then when she gets to where I'm at, I click and then I give her the treat or I can say yes. So when she gets to the leash, what I'm doing is using the kiss, which is called a positive interrupter. To get her to look at me, when she looks at me, I hold down the treat. And she comes back to me to get that treat. So instead of your dog pulling down the leash, pulling you down the street, your dog is actually checking in with you. Come here a couple seconds. Are you gonna give me another treat? Are you gonna give me another treat? Are you gonna give me another treat? Not for barking, but how about a sit? And this is why you really need to train your dog to sit first. I think she knows how to sit, but this gesture thing is a little bit, of, if she sits down, that kind of puts her in a little bit more of a subordinate position. So I think she's like, who are you to challenge me and say I can't sit or I can't have authority? Uh, not the standing position authority, but basically for her, I think she is. She has no rules. She gets petted whenever she wants. And I think that she doesn't have a lot of cues. So she probably doesn't have a lot of self-esteem and confidence. And so that creates an insecurity. Insecure dog barks. Just like if you, uh, I can't remember what the movie is. There's Denzel Washington movie where he's like, the loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. And so same thing, if your dog is barking, it's trying to overcome my insecurities. And so I'm not gonna reward, correct this, because that would be a reward. Instead, what I'm gonna do is see if I can lure into a sit. And some dogs don't like the, don't like the surface. So let's see if we can achieve this on, on the grass. So the idea for click, this is what I call training for attention. I like using a clicker when we're outside. And if I'm sitting, she's not gonna be barking quite so much. So what it is, is you, you tell your dog to sit, provide it knows how to sit. As soon as it sits, you click, give it a treat, take two steps towards your door, tell the dog to sit again. Do this in your, and you might have to do this in your house for a day or two before you get to the point where your dog is sitting right away. Then you do maybe a couple sits outside. Let's do a find it. And uh, you do a couple sits inside, go to the door, tell your dog to sit, then open the door. Your dog gets up, tell it to sit before you open the rest of the door. Your dog sits and you walk outside. As soon as you get outside, sit. Dog sits, click, and give it a treat. And then take about two steps. So you're just only going two or three, four steps each time, and then ask your dog for that sit. What we should see is the dog start checking in with you more and more. Now, let's say that I'm walking down the street and I get halfway down the block and I can't get my dog to sit anymore. My dog's saying that there's too much, I've reached a certain threshold of excitement, I'm too worked up, I can't listen. Well, if my dog can't, oh, well, there you sat down. My dog can't even sit, I'm certainly not gonna continue on that walk because the dog's already communicating to me. I'm already past my point of, of, my threshold of being able to listen to you. So if I continue on, then I'm just setting my dog up to fail. And so I would only continue the walk as long as I can get my dog to sit. And if it can't sit, 
that we turn around and go back to the house because that's too far away. At first, you might only make it one or two houses, then eventually you go further and further, and eventually your dog's checking in with you, and you're checking in to make sure your dog's listening to you by asking for that sit. It sits, you say your marker word, or you click, and you give them that treat. Sage, go get that. He's very cautious. Sage. This is my buddy Sage. And these are some tips you can use if your dog doesn't like to listen to you and likes to bark when it's out on walks.